Hey guys, how's it going? So today I just want to work on planting up a few containers. I don't even know which ones. I know which ones I'm going to start with, but I don't know how many I'm going to actually do today. Um, but I still have so many left to plant for summer. I feel like we've been working on so many different things and I just kind of continue planting until I feel done, which is pretty much never. I want to start with the six containers up here by our balcony area. So these six right here, you can see I've already been playing with plants in those right there, kind of trying to decide what I wanted to do. I'm going to use some interesting stuff and I kind of want these to just be kind of mixed, a mixed jumble of cool colors. So quite a bit of pink and some white. Uh, I had bulbs in these this spring. Well, in these two for sure. I had down the sod daffodils, which are still in there. I left them in there. We're just going to see what happens. And then I had tulips in here with some nemesia. It was very pretty. And then I had hellebores and uh, bacopa. Anyway, uh, those have kind of been gone for a while. Um, so I did bring up some drip supplies because I do not have any drip in here. There's my Falcos. And then I have some really neat plants. Now, this spot is interesting. It does get full morning sun. You can see right now we're about noon and it's still very, very sunny. So even though the tag says on these two, so the callas, these are new for next year. They're absolutely stunning. Be my first love. And I just think they're gorgeous. And it says that they can do, they want part to full sun. So I'm thinking I'm gonna try these as a centerpiece because they will be protected from that hottest part of the day. Still, it's a lot of heat up here. So we're just gonna try it out and see how they do. And then this is a um, wild berry hookera or wild rose. I think it's a wild rose. Yep, wild rose. See the tag, sun or shade. And I do have some of these behind our chicken coop that have fared fairly well and they get the same amount of sun. So I don't know, this one I feel like I'm pushing it because I have had it in the greenhouse and it'll probably burn. Um, just kind of moving it out into a sunny position. So I don't know. Anyway, I've just been kind of playing with stuff. There's some really beautiful things. Uh, uh, icicles, helichrysum. This is a trailing rose vein, supertunia. This is a new type of coleus coming out. It's called newly noir. noir. Um, and then there's a diamond snow euphorbia. Just a bunch of beautiful stuff. Whirlwind pink scavola, hippo pink hypoestes, polka dot plant. Prince Tut in that one right there. Anyway, I think these are just gonna have to evolve as I plant them. As I was putting together plants for these, I kind of was looking at the containers and thinking like, I don't wanna plant a lot of things that trail over the sides just because I don't wanna cover up the beauty of the containers. And when I'm doing a grouping like this, I don't want them to look messy either. And I think when you have a ton of things that are trailing out, it can look a little bit uh, chaotic. Um, the other part of the equation here is that uh, we've got boxwood hedges that come right up to the containers that have not been trimmed. Um, we got up to 100, a little bit over 100 this last week, but we've had a major cool down. We're in the 80s now. We're supposed to go down to the 70s for the next five days. So I'm going to attempt and this might be a wrong choice, but I think I'm gonna lightly trim these up at least close to these containers to give a little bit more structure so there's not as much fluff. And then I'm gonna spray them with wilt stop. So hopefully we don't deal with any burn. So I think because I don't have a super great direction on what I want to do up here, I'm just gonna do it. And then we'll take a look in the end at what things ended up looking like. <laughs> so let's just get started. Okay, I just have to show you how these first three turned out because I am just loving, loving them. So first off, I got them all set up on drip, uh, which they currently were not, that we were hand watering all spring. And so I'll show you before I plant these how I set those up. But in our tallest container, I wanted to keep that one the most simple. So I did a Prince Tut in the center and then the Whirlwind Pink Scovola, four of those around the outer rim there. In the second container down, I've got lots of beautiful things. So two of the callas as our centerpiece, those won't put on a whole lot more size. So I wanted to use two of them. So it looked nice and bulky. I think it's gorgeous. And then I've got two different kinds of coleus in here. First off, we've got a lime thyme, which I like the bright pop that that brings to the container. And then I've got the newly noir 
coleus on the back because that's what I used in here. Kind of wanted to tie, tie them together a little bit. Like I used one whirlwind pink scavola here to kind of tie this one to that. There's two diamond snow euphorbias in there, a icicles helichrysum, and then a hippo rose a polka dot plant. So really like the whirlwind pink, that'll do a little bit of trailing, but nothing else really well. It'll kind of keep itself contained um, and upright so we can see the beautiful, beautiful containers because this one right here is the English floral urn. This is the Twain pot, I think. And then I have the Gothic pot risers, which that one's wonderful because the drip tubing is so like easy to put in and out of that one. This I had to kind of dig out of dig the mulch out from under these to kind of create a channel so that the drip tubing didn't get pinched. But in this one, we've got a truffle of pink gomfrina in the center, which if you've ever grown those, you know what that's gonna turn into. There's two newly noir coleus, one icicles helichrysum, one diamond snow, and then some sparkling amethyst superbina. I think it's a super pretty mix. Okay, let me show you the drip. So like I said, there are daffodil bulbs still in this container, hoping to just carry them over for next spring. So I used a plant stake. See that plant stake sitting right there? And I just poked it down the center until I found the drain hole. <laughs> Thankfully, it was pretty easy. And then I ran a piece of quarter inch, just black solid poly down through that and out the bottom. And then it cruises over. And I did that on all of these. So this one didn't have any soil, so it was easy. This one, the drain hole's on the side. Um, so I put it down through there. And then you can see all three of the tubes from all three pots coming right here to the drip line that I have nearby, which runs every day. And so you can see like underneath this container, I kind of dug out uh, so that the drip tubing wasn't gonna be pinched because these pots are awful heavy and you don't wanna run drip and not have it functioning because of that. This one doesn't look like it, but you can tell like, see if I pull that tubing moves. <laughs> so you just want it to be um, free flowing still, like easily movable. So I will cover over all of that chaos with mulch. I do want to test the whole system though before I cover over anything, just in case there are any leaks. But you can see right here where all three of them go into that drip tubing, which covers this section here. So we've got this flower bed nearby. All right, so now I just need to get these planted. All right, so Aaron came out. He's over there, kind of behind the tree. He just turned on the drip system over here so I could see how these will work. And look at this. I'm seeing water coming out of that drip tube. Yeah, is it working? Yes. Let's see this one. Yep. Check that out. And then this one. Yep. Oh, how often does this one go off every day, right? It's not programmed yet. It's oh. not tied into the timer, so it's just manual. Oh, okay. Kind of oh, that does. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can, it, that won't be long though, right? And then we can get them programmed. I'm hoping Monday. Oh, well, that's well, not I mean, bad. Just whenever Benny comes. Sure. The programmer, so because we have like this commercial grade system, mm -hmm. there's like this $600 programmer in order to tie stuff in. Are the you decoders. serious? Yeah. You better just not tell me any of those details. I know, I don't I'd rather buy one. Know. Benny has one. Oh, okay. Um, but I don't really want to buy one because That's a lot, bucks. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's why I haven't done it. Well. So this drip hasn't been going at all in this anywhere? No, I, I've been doing it every day. Oh, you have been? Yeah. Oh, well then. Same with these sprinklers right here behind you. Those go every, oh, well, I've been manually turning those on. Good for you. I didn't even know you were doing that. Yeah. Um, and then can we test this one, Aaron? Should be going. Oh, it should be. Yes, it is. That one's dripping. You see that? Um, this one is spraying, not dripping. Oh. <laughs> And this is the last one. That one's dripping. Oh, yes. I'll let him go for a little bit. Okay. I love it. Well, with that Jupiter's beard behind it too. That looks so pretty, <laughs> that pink behind this. Also, you should show what I'm doing over here. Oh. Aaron's trying to tame the dust. You guys, all the equipment is gone from this area except for Benjamin's equipment. And it's all leveled out. Sprinkler system starts next week. And Aaron has been running different sets, sprinkler sets throughout this whole property, like this whole section. <laughs> Look cute, excavator. 
it's doing a good job. Yeah. I mean, it's a pain to have to come out here every once in a while and but move look it. At this. I mean, it's just. Yeah, it's powder. That. Yeah. Well, here comes the wind. We're supposed to have a really windy night tonight. Surprise, surprise. All right, now that these are done, I'm gonna head up to the parking area. I've got two sets of containers, one kind of flanking the opening where we come into our yard, and then one set that flank the opening of our vegetable garden. Both will be pretty easy, far less involved than these. Let's work on these two first because these are gonna be extremely quick to do. All I have to do is clean the pansies out and plant something new. Um, they already have a drip system run to them. I'm not gonna trim the boxwoods because even though we're cooling down, these get the heat from the rocks and all of that, and I think it would be too much so we'll just leave them as is for now. So I used the Super Bells Double Twilight, five of them in each container. They're new for next year and they are the most beautiful double blooms. I tend to have better luck with Super Bells if I just use them on their own um, without any other annuals to compete because they tend to like to dry out a little bit between waterings, which the boxwoods benefit from as well. I did the same exact look in the big urns along our walkway here. So I've got a boxwood in the center surrounded by the double twilight. I think it'll provide a little bit of cohesion to the area to have the same look mirrored, but in different containers, different height. I think it's gonna be really pretty. Plus, we've got the little hedge of Sweet Romance Lavender that's just now, like it's about ready to burst into bloom. So then we have the dark lavender right here and then the, the light blue, so pretty. Okay, one more set of containers right here. So these are the ones I had at the opening of our cut flower garden last year. Then we moved them up here last fall. Now you can see that I still have this triple topiary. This is the original from last year. The one I had in this container we just got rid of because it was entirely covered in spider mites. I'm not talking like a little infestation. It was massive. And occasionally I feel like a plant is kind of past the point of no return, especially when it comes to spider mites. Um, there's a point where it's really just not worth the effort trying to get rid of them. And I don't want to risk anything else around them getting it because it's such a pain to get rid of them. So what we did is we took a garbage sack and just carefully covered the entire topiary and cut it off at the base and tossed it. Um, and then got rid of the whole, you know, everything that was in the pot and then cleaned the pot and all of that business. Um, so anyway, we're gonna plant a new one. The garden center, I called down and I'm like, mom, do you have that one last triple topiary? And she did. That hardly ever happened. So I ran down there and picked it up. I'm so excited that they had it. Now we have two clean, healthy topiaries. It looked like, um, well, it looked white because of all the webbing and I'm not sure how I didn't notice it and then it had a very brown cast. So even if we got rid of the spider mites, they would never look equal. It would take a long time. Now this is a light breeze. Hopefully it doesn't pick up. And then to go around the base of it, I think I'm just gonna do a mixture of three different Supertunias. There's Mini Vista Indigo, Trailing ro uh, Rose Veined, and a new Supertunia for next year called Vista Jazzberry. So it's got like a little bit more of a vibrant pink to it. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of trimming on that topiary. It's got a little bit of wild growth, but not a lot. And then I think what I'm gonna do, uh-oh, we're gonna lose it. Ah! done the wind has already kind of blown the super tunias around but these are a little bit leggy anyway you can see that we've got just some leggy growth so I just wanted to show you how if you have super tunias that either look like that or are like that when you plant them it's really beneficial to the plant to give them a haircut so you can come in with your clippers and it might seem like counterintuitive to cut off any growth that has blooms but it'll actually benefit the plant big time. Because what it does is it, instead of the plant trying to send energy into keeping all this leggy growth nice, it can send energy into new growth. So the plant will start to stool out, get thicker, and it'll produce more blooming branches. So it's actually really good for the plant. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that 
to every single one of these plants in the container and it will look sad and there will probably be no color left but in probably one to two weeks we will have full gorgeous blooming plants and we'll update you guys and let you see well i didn't have to cut off every bit of color but all the plants look better. They look tidier and actually healthier, not looking leggy like that. The rule of thumb is just to cut no more than 20% of the plant away because you do need to leave some foliar growth in order for the plant to absorb sunshine and turn into energy to make the plant want to grow. So do keep that in mind. And the reason why mine looked leggy when I planted them is I was just keeping them in too much shade while they were waiting for their turn to be planted. So anyway, that's why they get they got leggy and sometimes that happens about midsummer and it's a good idea to do a haircut at that point as well. So I do need to trim these back here. You can see that this pot gets a little bit of late afternoon shade, but for the most part both of these containers are in the sun for the majority of the day. All done. So don't be afraid to give your plants a little bit of a haircut. No matter what time of the season it is, if they start looking leggy, give them a haircut, give them some fertilizer, and they rebound really quick. Oh, and make sure they're in the right amount of light too. That's helpful. All right guys, so we'll be giving you updates on these containers as we go throughout this season. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Did you get it? Yeah, I got some. Oh. That is heavy, isn't it? Yeah.